It's not that hard, webcam. Just like... <laughs> right. Sorry. Hang on. Cut. Cut, cut, cut. Cut all that. I forgot. No, no. Fix it in post. Keep going. <laughs> Hi guys, and welcome to Zombie Banana Spiders. We liked it so much last time, we thought we'd do it again. I'm Heather, and with me today are... Colin. Hillary. And this time we thought we'd talk about things that scare us. Maybe if there's a difference between the horror or the, the scary things that we consume, books, TV shows, movies, comic books, that kind of thing, and what actually scares us. And maybe if there are different types of being scared, all that kind of good stuff. So let's dive right into it. Colin. Oh, okay. Heather. What well, scares uh, what a question. you? Uh, I mean, a lot of things. Uh, but I, I like the way you phrased it earlier as to like uh, the horror that we that scares us and the horror that we consume. Because, uh, you know, I, I don't I, I know when I'm watching like a, a, a scary movie. I'm I'm really scared, and nor do I really want to seek out movies that actually, like, would cause that for me. So, uh, you know, like, what actually scares me? I, I mean, it was so much easier when I was a kid because I could say, like, I don't know, Jason Voorhees or, like, dinosaurs or something. Um, but as an adult, it's like, what scares me? An audit from the IRS? That's terrifying. Um, but I don't really have too many movies about that. Uh traditionally I, I guess if if this question was posed to other people what scares colin they'd probably be like spiders because i'm i'm pretty arachnophobic but uh but at the same time i kind of love spiders like they're they're hideous and horrible and god's mistake upon this earth a blight on our landscape uh but i love watching like giant spider movies or like when he fights that tarantula and the incredible shrinking man, it, it's good stuff. Um, eight legged freak. So anytime I see a spider, I have a, a visceral reaction as opposed to like a, a, a terrified or horrific reaction. Um, so it's kind of interesting, but um, yeah, I mean, so, so to answer your incredibly simple question, uh, spiders, spiders scare me. That, that's my answer. Thank you, Colin. Thank wow. you for sharing. Yeah, no problem. No problem. <laughs> but, I'm just, I'm letting it all out there today. <laughs> You're getting an intimate look at the inner workings of this twisted mind. It's spiders. They're awful. Ugh. But I think you raise a really good point with this idea, you know, adult fears kind of versus child fears. I, I don't know if that's the correct um, juxtaposition because... You know, it's not like, yes, adults, you know, it's kids are afraid of spiders. Adults aren't afraid of, you know, that's, that's not yeah. what it is. But yeah, like the, the, it came from beyond the audit is probably never going to be um, a horror movie. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Yeah. But um, I remember reading, it, it, it was a Stephen King book. Um <laughs> But it was it was Dance Macabre where he was talking about he was writing about horror and mm -hmm. I don't remember my memory is crap. I don't remember what story he was talking about, but it was a haunted house story. It was a modern haunted house story. Mm -hmm. And part of the fear that he saw in the audience members, like who was there watching the movie with him was it was all adult fears in in that um you know the family couldn't make mortgage payments that the the ghost or whatever it was that was haunting the house was causing destruction that they couldn't pay for that mm. um you know their their um their neighbors were thinking badly of them and so it was a really interesting view into you know it like what it, 
what we're talking about, what actually scares mm-hmm. us. For that audience with that particular movie, it was a reflection of all of those very adult fears. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I think um, some of the best uh, horror media, movies, books, whatever, are able to toe that line where you have both of them. Where as a kid watching it, there can be like scary monsters or ghosts or whatever that, that you know, whoa, freak you out. And then as an adult watching it, you can get something else from it and be like, oh, shit, mortgage payments. God, the bane of my existence. Uh, so I, I think that's really that's really interesting and, and definitely something worth uh, discussing, you know. Well, I think it's more than that because, like, when while introducing things like we've sunk all of our money into this home, it also makes it we can't go anywhere else. We can't get away mm. from this because we have literally no money to go anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. To that end, um, do you guys think that certain movies, media, and whatever um, that aren't traditionally horror? can be horror and the example that comes to mind is the tom hanks classic the money pit where they buy this house and they're sinking all their money into fixing up this like wreck like it's it's a comedy but as a homeowner i'm terrified watching it i'm like no this this could be me with these plumbing issues no what do you guys think i i definitely agree um and, and I'm I'm thinking of a particular series of movies, um, but for me it would be it's more like family interaction. Um, mm. That you know it could be in comedies, and most of the time it is like what people think is funny, watching. You know the fiance and the the like the the guy fiance and his future father in law like that kind of interaction people seem to find that funny where they can't stand mm-hmm. each other and i'm like no no this is just this is just making me literally sick to my stomach i can't watch mm-hmm. those kinds of of family interaction movies and mm-hmm. so that that would be for me definitely interesting i don't know if it's scary but i i been like And stiller comedies where he's the main character make me uncomfortable to the point where Mm -hmm. I can't watch them. Like, I don't, Mm -hmm. I actively avoid his movies because that type of humor makes me very uncomfortable. That kind of, like, awkward, like, interactions with with other people and stuff? Is that what you're referring to? Like, the worst possible thing that could happen in this situation happens in this situation, and people find that funny and i find that awful like i don't want yeah. i don't want those bad things to happen to him i don't think that's funny yep. sorry <laughs> no i and and like if we talk about you know if we want to talk about different types of being scared i'd also like to talk about different types of of horror and different like like being something being horror versus being horrified like in those types of situations where yeah it's absolutely the the worst thing that could ever happen that horrifies me whether it's in a horror movie or whether it's in a comedy i am horrified by those Mm -hmm. types of situations Mm -hmm. i i agree and i understand uh it's so weird to think about, you know, like, like again, the simpler times, being a kid, when, when you could answer such a complex question, what scares you with, like, a simple answer, and then as an adult, how do you express, like, awkward family situations, or, like, bad things happen to Ben Stiller, like, how do you express that in a, it, it, you know, in a, in a, in a setting, and, um, you know, th- this would be a horrific situation in and of itself. But if you're like at a dinner party with strangers, uh, quote unquote, the normal folk, and uh, I don't know how you get on this conversation. What scares you, Hillary? And, you know, you go into like, well, Ben Stiller comedies when bad things happen, like everybody would just kind of stare at you like we expected you to say 
dinosaurs or mice and uh you know and so it, it's like hard to have this conversation in a a normal conversation i would think you know i don't know that's that's sure. my two cents well, i think well and it's it's to, it's what context are you using horror in because it's hmm. i those are not the type of horror like those that type of horror is not something i'm into like i said before like the serial the based on true story serial killer stuff is something that i usually stay away from in terms of movies mm -hmm. um i'll watch like true crime stuff but some some of it just gets too real and mm -hmm. ooh, it, it just makes me feel gross but um Right now, I'm I'm big in the gothic horror, um, and that's where I'm getting my fun scares from right mm. now. So, do you guys find that even with like fun scares, uh, they like affect you? Like, does does anything you read, Hillary, keep you like up, or that you like ruminate on, or anything like that? Like after the fact, or you know, um. Think so, and I think that that it's going to tie into my suggestion. But the uh, Susan Hill is an author that I've been reading a lot of, listening to her stories a lot of lately, and um, they're ghost stories, but they deal with family, they deal with loss, they and um. So it, there are different levels of it, mm -hmm. I guess. I think that's pretty fair. I think that's pretty fair. Let me ask you guys, um, when was the last time a piece of something you've consumed, um, not food, but it kept you awake at night, like that it was maybe so scary or so disturbing or so uh, whatever it is that it just like... Um, kept you awake maybe like ooh, you, you didn't want to go to bed shut the lights off and kind of you know has that has that has that even happened to you guys i'm saying it like it's it clearly has but uh has that happened to you guys as adults we'll say or if it was the last time when that happened were you a kid and what was it <clears throat> well the last one that i really remember happening i was at least in college um and I think I was listening to The Woman in Black when I was sleeping. And I woke up and I didn't open my eyes because I was like, she's standing over there and she's going to make somebody die. So I'm not going to open oh. my eyes. <laughs> and it's just, that. this is the reality that I live in now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I think... I think what scared me about her is in that story is she's there's so much anger and there's nothing you can do once you mm -hmm. have her attention like there's yeah. nothing you can do she, you're yeah. either you or someone you care about is gonna die yeah so <laughs> I, I I completely agree with you one of the things that that scared one of the few movies that have scared me is uh the grudge have you guys seen the the at least the first grudge even the either the american release or the uh juwan the uh japanese ones but the idea that like if you enter that house you're dead there's nothing that can be done and uh it's it's the same thing with like the woman in black that you brought up it, it's terrifying that thought that there's nothing that can be done for you you know you're like doomed so i agree yeah. that's pretty terrifying that's what I found scary about zombies too before is like it's so easy to get infected and then you lose yourself and you just become this worse than a scavenger like it's it, it decomposing you lose yourself and you it's it's just awful <laughs> and um yeah and there's nothing you can do there's I agree. Sometimes they have cures, but most of the time there's no cures. 
that it's rare to see a zombie movie with like cures or anything. But real quick, just brief tangent. You said that when you become a zombie, you come become a worse version of yourself. Do you think that some people actually becoming a zombie is the better option for them? Like they're such crappy people that when they become a zombie, you're like, good on, good on Jim. He's finally going after what he wants. He's pursuing brains down the street. Like, you know, no. <laughs> well, I guess it depends on the zombie because mm -hmm. now there's different kinds. Mm hmm. You know, how about you, Heather? When was the last time that something kept you awake at night? Besides all uh, the uh, the the mice who live in our house and my ex <clears throat> just general existential dread, um, yeah. yeah, there's a it's a Stephen King short story. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I swear I read other things. I swear. Dun, dun, dun. Um, what a twist! <laughs> but uh, it's in his new. I don't have it in here. It's in it's in one of his new shorts uh, collections of short stories, um, and so spoilers, spoilers. Click away now, um, but it it's basically um, it's about this guy and his wife. They live in uh, I don't know if it's New York, Chicago, some some big city, in an apartment, and. Um, his wife is very sick and he keeps getting up and going to work and you know he leaves her notes because he goes to work really early and comes back really late at night and she's always asleep when he leaves and she's back in bed when he comes back and so he hasn't actually seen her for like a week and through all of the he Stephen King just keeps building and building and building and building this thing and you come to find out that she died, like, five days ago. And they have a dog. And the dog was eating part of her. Oh! And, but that's, like, for me, that's not the horrific part. It's that this guy, on some level, he knew that she was dead. And he could not bring himself to admit it. And the way the, the, the story ends is there's this smell that's been mm -hmm. permeating the, 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 the whole floor of their apartment. And the, the, the landlord or whoever thinks it's the apartment next door to them because that family went on vacation. They've been gone for a couple of weeks, so they think... Um, either, you know, some food was left out and it's rotting or an animal, you know, got up in there and died. And so they, they break into the, this is while the guy is at work, they break into the other apartment and, um, or, you know, they get the landlord, lets them in, whatever. They go into the other apartment, they don't find anything, but they're noticing, you know, the smell is actually coming from the other apartment. And so he gets a call at work and the way that King wrote this, it's like, it's that it's finally, he's finally, part of him is finally trying to accept what happened, but he's fighting against it. He doesn't want to admit that his wife is dead. Mm -hmm. And so he, he leaves work, he rushes home, he gets a call from the landlord saying, you know, we actually think that, that, that the smell is coming from your apartment, so... We're going to go in, um, you know, around three o'clock this afternoon. You know, it's, it's a courtesy call basically just to let him know. And mm. he rushes home and he's like noticing all of these things that he's been seeing all week. But it's like he's seeing them for the first time. It's that, you know, the, the coffee that she always made. It's, there's, there's mold growing in the coffee pot. He didn't notice it. All of these... Um, sticky notes that he left her, you know, saying, I'm off to work. I love you. Goodbye. You know, there's, there, there's sticky notes all over everything. And, you know, he notices the dog coming out of their bedroom, licking its chops. And he goes in and, you know, he sits down by her and he starts talking to her like she's just asleep. And he's like, you know, you just, you know, 
you you just rest you know it'll be okay you just rest mm. and like in the background you hear like the sirens and stuff coming and for some reason that story just i don't know if it actually scared me the the way mm. like you know when i was a little kid like you know zombies scared me and and vampires scared me it's like it's not the same okay. kind of fear but that kind of i don't even know what it is that that inability to accept something so horrible mm -hmm. and then thinking about like what's going to happen to that guy you know because the story ends it, it ends right there but then you know what comes after you know the cops show up the landlord mm. shows up and they find his dead wife half of her eaten y you know what what is what is his life now and when you were when you were talking about um with with um like the 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 that feeling of being doomed of there's nothing mm. that you can do i think that that's actually what it is that's what scares me is the feeling that there is no hope Mm -hmm. You know, you could have scary stories yeah. that they don't even have to have a happy ending. I'm not, you know, not, not saying that or anything, but that there's just despair and mm -hmm. nothing else. Yeah. That's what really gets me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree to that. Um, and that does sound like terrifying. That uh, that story that you were describing sounds And like, awful. I can't do it just, I would, even though I like spoiled the ending, I would still say read it. Because just yeah. the way that he builds it up. I have not, I've read it once. I've not been able to go back to it. And mm. I mean, I read things over and over obsessively and I have not been able to bring myself to read that story again brutal here's a question then uh, that i was thinking about when you were just talking about the the hopelessness and that um uh there's a famous quote i think it's dolan maybe uh, don't quote me on that but it's like uh one death is a tragedy a million deaths is a statistic right like are there certain levels to the hopelessness because I love movies like uh, like John Carpenter's The Thing, which has a very hopeless ending. I love uh, like H.P. Lovecraft, cosmic horror tales where like the world is doomed by some unfathomable deity. But that doesn't scare me. That just I'm like, this is awesome. Like, so is is there a level where a certain amount of hopelessness is like awesome, and then a deep plummet to like this is awful. Uh, how, what do you guys think about that? I think it, it depends on how the author or the the storyteller presents the world. Because there could be a post-apocalyptic world that still has hope. Mm -hmm. like, and there could be a world that's coming to an end that still has hope. Um, okay. That's kind of what the problem that I had with the movie The Mist was spoiler alert at the end when <laughs> the dad kills everybody and then runs out of bullets and then is rescued you know the moment that he has the opportunity he's gonna kill himself like you could have just yeah. let him die with with his kid but it was so much more cruel to let him live and then mm. like then what you know he's gonna kill himself you know there's yeah Whatever. and and i feel like <laughs> that's the type of despair that i can't handle because it's it's like there is hope you know there he got rescued so obviously <clears throat> there is some hope but and and even if he had died if he had you know if he hadn't run out of bullets if he had killed himself with yeah. everybody else that would have been so tragic yeah. But it wouldn't have killed the hope. Yeah. By letting him live like that. I know I read that I, I read somewhere and, and that that Stephen King actually liked that ending better. And I, it's because he's a twisted, twisted man. 
yeah. but um but yeah it's it's stories like that and i absolutely agree hill it's it's how the author builds the world i would mm-hmm. get depressed when i read hp lovecraft but it wasn't that type of hopelessness never really scared me because I never could really get invested in any of his characters. Like, I, I never found them... Aww. Oh, dear. Huh. <laughs> that was quick. Yep. I'm going to kill this thing in Discord. <laughs> but it, it kept my camera settings. Yes! Apparently. So, thumbs up. So, yes, you uh, you never couldn't get invested in the world. Um, in the characters, I was I was very very invested in the worlds that he built, um, yeah. but like I never liked any of the characters, and so that was that made it different for me. It wasn't like I I enjoy H P Lovecraft. I love like Cthulhu themed board games, <laughs> um, but but uh, but yeah, I think it's I think it's about how for me it's about how the author introduces the characters and how they make me feel for them and even if i can't identify with them if i sympathize with them or empathize Mm -hmm. with them um that's what what kills it for me what Mm -hmm. what just makes it so so hopeless Mm -hmm. Well, we've been talking a lot about the what scares me conversation, but uh, Hillary, what scares you? What scares me? Yeah. Oh, well, I I mean, oh. in real life, like what, like what type of scaring? <laughs> uh, what, what am I actually scared of in real life like, that I can yeah, encounter on a daily basis? Sure. Yeah. What's yeah? Go for it. Mm. Well, okay. Um, I I don't know if it's necessarily. I think that we we talk about it more as anxiety than than actual fear. But like failure, mm-hmm. I'm going to school right now, and um, it sometimes it's terrifying to even get started because I'm afraid oh. I'm gonna fail. But then you just get started and. It's not as bad as you think it's going to be. So I guess the anticipation and failure. (laughs) That's very fair. Very fair. How about what scares you in a, in a a fun way, but like what, what's, uh, what scares you in like a, a more traditional, like, like when you were a kid, Oh, when you were a kid, what scared you? Is there anything that kind of sticks out for you in that respect? Um, well, I don't know if we've talked about this yet or not, but, um, in a lot of movies, uh, that I watched, I found female, like the, the female characters that were evil were a lot more scary than the male characters. So specifically like witches, uh, the movie witches, that movie was affecting and um i love angelica houston she's like one of my favorite people ever and that was one of my first introductions to her was the witches um so i guess witches but now i like witches and i like the whole green face i know that's controversial but Mm. like i like the green face Mm -hmm. um and let's see what what else so i guess uh, maleficent but i think her music more so than anything scared me um i'm just thinking about it it's playing in my mind right now (laughs) continue continue yeah and then like the combination the color combination of the green and purple and black i think lent helped lend to it and then the <clears throat> the actress was wonderful who did her voice but she's the same actress that did the wicked stepmother and find her as scary but the voice was still good okay 
That wicked stepmother I don't know, scared um, me. Like Scar, Scar didn't scare. It wasn't scary. I didn't find Rasputin scary. Mm. It was more funny, but I think it was because it was Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't think of a male villain like in terms of kids movies that was actually scary to me. Mm. But that's interesting. I don't know. I'm having a one-sided conversation. I'm sorry. No, keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Um, right. That's why I find it so interesting with them doing the live action versions of Disney movies now because those stories are very different when it's real people doing the action and not like Gaston was scary in the to me in in the live action version because I've seen people like him. Like I've met people like him. And in the cartoon, he's just a big elf, and he yeah. he he isn't serious for some mm. reason. I never took him seriously, but then when I saw it in live action, it's it's a different story almost. Like it's it affects it a lot. Uh, understandable, and I, I think that's interesting too. That that live action versus the animated but uh what you said earlier about the female villains being scarier like yeah i i agree with that a hundred percent uh and it's it's weird right because it, it seems like there's um just by volume because we live in this horrible god forsaken world that they're they give the roles to so many men there's not as many female villains out there comparatively but uh they're all like head and shoulders above you know, I, I think so. Well, and I like that makes me think because in kids movies, like if we're thinking about kids movies, it seems like disproportionately the other way that the females are always the villains, right? Because you've got Maleficent, you've got mm -hmm. Ursula, mm -hmm. um, I guess Cruella de Vil. Cruella de Vil. What's it? Medusa. Medusa. Oh, Medusa's she. Medusa's of booty. <laughs> <laughs> she scared me. Um, I love her. Yeah, no, no, me too. Me too. But oh my God, every time we watched that movie, I was like, I could not look away, but she terrified me. Mm. Um, And then like what? Okay, we've got Scar. Yeah, he didn't scare me. Jafar... He didn't scare me. Um, who else? Maybe they purposefully made males less scary. I mean, Rasputin. Rasputin. But was that that was was that Disney? That I wasn't don't know Disney. That was Disney. It, it no, still no. counts though. It's like an animated kids film. So. Okay. Okay. But yeah, yeah, he he wasn't scary. Um, oh, you know, I guess this movie doesn't hold up at all. We're back. He kind of scared oh, yeah. me oh, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. We got but only because he was like again trying to take away who the dinosaurs were, even though you could argue he was just making them back to what who they actually were. Mm. Yeah. And he was a, he was a goon by the end, but he was kind of scary. <clears throat> And I think it was the reason why I found him scary, too, is kind of tied back to what we were talking about before, where when the kids signed that contract, it was like, that's it. You know, there's no hope. You signed this so you have no other choice. You have to do this. <clears throat> okay, so, so far we got four female villains who were scary to one male villain who was kind of scary. Um... I'm trying in, the, to in the Disney movies, right? In the Disney movies, or really well, any other like, animated yeah. kids movies. Well, even, even if you don't like do live animated, action. like yeah, even look at what action. Hillary said about the witches. Yeah, okay, we well, yeah. they get many yeah. fingers, more fingers on this side Terrible. for the witches. They should even have that movie in the element. <laughs> go on, go on. Ninety percent sure that like half those witches were men. Yeah. In, in the ballroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think they could get enough. They either didn't have... They they spent all their makeup budget on Angelica Houston, so they couldn't get um, 
bald caps for everybody or they were just like <laughs> open call for bald dudes who are willing to put on a dress <laughs> <laughs> it's a I, good movie yeah it is a good terrifying movie. movie they showed that in my elementary school like they're like hey guys how about we show y'all a movie everybody go to like mrs whatever's room and they showed us this and i was terrified like uh i i must have been i don't i can't remember what grade this was but i was young like when that little girl gets trapped in a painting in that movie terrifying that's that's not that's not fun scared that's like this has traumatized me forever <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, elementary school. I don't think they could get away with that in a in a kids uh elementary school today. I, I don't know. I don't know what's what's going on, what the young kids are watching, but my guess is it's just like they're watching hey kids, we're gonna watch a movie and it's like Paw Patrol up until they're eighteen years old if they watch anything in school, you know. <laughs> well that or I wonder if it's like the kid, you know, these kids today, if they wouldn't be scared by the witches, you know, like if they find other things scary. Or I, if... I think we kidnap a bunch of kids and we make them watch the witches. <laughs> cut, cut, then... cut. We're going to do a little bit of experimentation and we're going to see if these children are terrified of the witches. Because my guess is kidnapping yes. for science. Well, so. there goes our YouTube channel. No, seriously, I, I I think that if you put a bunch of six year olds and made them watch the witches, they six be year olds, yes. Yeah, no, I I think that's roughly the age I somewhere in that. Range. Oh my! I thought like maybe you were ten, eleven. Oh well, let's, my! God. Let's find out what year was the witches. Oh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Because it was whatever year that came out somebody else wants to look that up so nobody sees to the internet <laughs> nobody sees my mouse moving i, I can hear them heather but i can't see 1990 them. 1990 oh, 1990 God. so i was seven wow so yeah that is that is too young i don't know, I don't know if we watched it right when it came out but that's the same year that it came out i was five and oh, yeah. um, I remember being embarrassed because I had to have, I watched Ernest Scared Stupid with mom at home. She rented it for me and I had to have her uh, fast forward through parts of it because the troll was scary. But it, yeah. I was six. I was yeah. embarrassed because I was afraid of Ernest Scared Stupid, but I was six. So oh. I don't feel as as embarrassed by that anymore <laughs> no, that, that scene where that trolls under that girl's bed terrifying like yeah. it, it it holds up they the filmmakers i think knew what they were doing you know amazing yeah, it's a great movie it is it is a classic um i i think i might suddenly change my recommendation for the week <laughs> no no no, no. We'll, we'll keep with it another week i'll be i'll be doing Ernest scared stupid but uh, once my tattoo, my earnest tattoo is done, I'll just prom I'll be promoting twenty four seven. You know, so, absolutely. Love, love some Jim Varney. He's good. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> weird, freaky kid stuff. Like it, it always seemed to me, like when I was younger, that the stuff that was supposed to be scary wasn't as scary as like other random stuff they'd put in a movie or in a book or, or or whatever you know if they were intending to be scary it was rare that it actually was but if they like that the witches people were like oh it's funny it's a great little kids movie and then you know no no it's not it's horrifying you know um i'm trying to think of another example like like well like you said hillary Ernest scared stupid like yeah, I don't think it was supposed to have that effect on people to actually scare them. Yeah. But like, I don't think they made it that way necessarily, but I can totally see why you would be freaked out or afraid in certain parts. 
Well, it makes yeah. me it makes me wonder yeah. too, like who the audience was for that movie, because I mean I, I don't know who the audience is for all of Ernest's movies, but everybody. Because Ernest Scared Stupid always stood out. The to... treasure. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> he he. That movie though always stood out to me, apart from his other movies, because like kids could watch his other movies. Mm-hmm. And I know that the one where, like, Ernest goes to school, whatever that one was, like, there were teenagers in that movie. But Ernest mm. Scared Stupid was about children. Like, they were mm-hmm. the main characters along with Ernest. And, you know, it was his heart of a child that saved the ball in the end. And so, like, that movie... I don't know that it was necessarily directed at children, but I mean, it certainly resonated with children. I think probably in ways that his other movies didn't because everything, like I'm thinking of his other movies, everything happens to him in the other movies. In this movie- Well, Ernest Saves Christmas maybe too. That one I can't remember. I do not remember <laughs> Ernest Saves Christmas. So, it's, oh. yeah, t- t- take whatever with a grain of salt, because um, I don't even know that I've seen all of Ernest's movies. But from the ones that I have seen and, and with Ernest... You haven't watched stupid, the Uvra? The what? <laughs> the the uh, the Jim Varney, his, uh, what is that? The, his oeuvre, his no. body of work? <laughs> no, I have not seen his entire oeuvre. No. <laughs> But, but like, in, in Ernest Scared Stupid, everything happens to the kids. And so I yeah. think if, if you're a kid watching that, mm. that's scary, you know? And to parents watching it, or even, not even parents, like, just adults watching it, yeah, it's a stupid Ernest flick, you know, it's entertaining and I enjoy it. But, like, if you're a kid watching that. Yeah. The one thing, uh, the one Ernest that really scared me was Ernest goes to jail when they take him to be executed in the electric chair near the end of the movie. Like, yeah, okay. So um, that was terrifying (laughs) to me. And I like how, you're right, Heather, who were these aimed at? Because uh, I can only think of a handful of children's films which involve somebody being on screen executed by the electric chair. Like, that's... Not something you usually put in your family feature, you know. Usually, have you guys uh, seen Doctor Otto and the Riddle of the Gloom Beam? No, I have it not. Is a... I've seen that picture though. <laughs> that looks amazing. It is very bizarre if you don't know who Ernest is for I have no idea who that movie is for you guys should check that one out (laughs) oh my god I think it's on YouTube in addition to Blood Gnome I now have another thing that I need to to find because where was where has that been all of my life (laughs) you know that looks great and that's Jim Varney in that right that that was him right Yep. He plays a couple different characters in that one. Because of course he it's is. Very <laughs> it's very strange. Well, I've never heard of that. That's amazing. It's it kind of reminded me of um, MST3K if they made a movie of the like story of the people watching the movies like just instead robots. of what. Yeah. Okay. Like it, it kind of reminded me of that. <laughs> that looks incredible. I, I'm I'm st- I'm like speechless because I'm like, <laughs> I I thought I've seen all of Jim Varney's stuff. I used to have the uh, TV show uh, on DVD, mm-hmm. and I've seen all the commercials. That amazing. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. Wow. Amazing. My whole world has been turned upside down. <laughs> Well, on that note, this is a fantastic conversation, and we would love to continue it with people. If you want to leave comments and and things of, you know, what scares you um, to people who are watching or people who are listening, you can leave it in comments. Um, But I think it might be time for our recommendations. Let's do it. 
Let's do it. All right. Uh, I'm going first this week. And uh, in the spirit of what scared us, my uh, pick of the week is scary stories to tell in the dark. Uh, this was also uh, Hillary's original pick. I feel bad I stole her thunder on this, but at least our wavelengths are connecting. That's the wavelength sign right there. Um, <laughs> so these bad boys, when I was a kid, and I was like, oh, you know, I like a little goosebumps. I'm starting to get into some spooky stuff. And uh, they had them at like every library in the entire U.S. Like, cool, these are great children's books. So you get them out of the library and then you open them. And then you're scarred for the rest of your natural life uh, because <laughs> the artwork that's in these things are terrifying, like terrifying today. Um, illustrations by Stephen Gamel. I don't know what's wrong with this guy, but I love it. And uh, whatever he's got, I want some uh, because I don't know, concocting these like nightmare things amazing i love it there's three volumes here they also have them collected in um been reprinted all all for many years re uh, collected in treasury editions uh don't get the ones with the new art they remade the art because the old stuff was too scary and uh don't get those because if you're getting these you're getting them to be scared um and the story scared me too most of them are like uh, collected by Alvin Schwartz over the country, like old folk tales, uh, little songs and poems and, and stuff like that. And the one that scared the crap out of me, the story when I was younger was, um, let's see here. I believe it was the drum on page 31. Yes. Uh, the drum about these two sisters. And I'm going to spoil this for you. A little Halloween treat. Two sisters that were bad and they played in the woods and all this other junk. And their mom was like, you got to be home to watch your, your, you know, little brother. And the girls are bad and the mom keeps threatening to leave them, which, you know, I get it. Kids are a lot of work. Like, you might just need to cut and run. But uh, then she does and leaves them with this uh, lady they find in their house who has like diamonds for eyes and a wooden tail that keeps slapping on the ground. And that's it. And it's like Alvin Schwartz. He's in, he's out, leaves you with that. And it's horrifying. So scary stories to tell in the dark. One, two, and three there. Uh, check them out. And that that's me. Wonderful. Uh, so I'll go next. My... Um recommendation this week is an author uh susan hell she has a, a a series that she does that she i think she's better well she's well known for it but uh, i really like her ghost stories which are just kind of every once in a while she she'll write a, a short novella of a ghost story she did the woman in black which as we have discussed has frightened me in all its forms but she also um did a short story about uh, a, a woman who was engaged to a man and he met somebody else and she was really mad and so she sent him a painting uh for his like as a wedding present and it was a cursed painting and it Ooh. sucks people into it, speaking of witches. So, um, <clears throat> and um, then she did She did a couple more with, like, little kid ghosts, which are always creepy. But um, she she does very well with the, the whole gothic horror. She's English, so she's a little slower. And, and even though they're shorter stories, she does take her time with them and i just think she's subtle and wonderful sounds awesome yeah i'm yeah. getting so many so many like books to add to my list i mean i've read scary stories to tell in the dark um but yeah like, i do, would not mind revisiting them at all yeah yeah good stuff how about you heather well my recommendation is uh swan song by Robert McCammon. I've got 
glare. I'm um, terrified because that thing looks like it's 11 inches thick. <sighs> Holy God. These are the books that I like. I like them this thick. Um, but this was the one um, I was, I think I kind of mentioned it, maybe in a previous podcast or at some point. Um, this is the one that um, it's an a uh, post. It's apocalypse into post apocalypse. Um, yeah. That was sort of uh, parallel to Stephen King's *The Stand*. Um, this is the one where there's um, nuclear war, basically, and you follow all of these different characters. And um, just like in *The Stand*, there's um, and we can talk about this. There's a potentially superfluous um, evil demon wandering around. There is a Mother Abigail type character not really but she's she's the light to the evil demon's darkness um but this i actually found scary um much more scary than the stand because once it like in the stand once once the plague part was over everything was not okay. It wasn't okay. But the characters could find food. They could find fresh water. They could find places to be safe at night. Um, they, they could travel relatively easily. Um, in this, everything gets nuked. So... That you got people, you know, suffering from radiation sickness. You you got people. You they can't find food. They can't find water. That everything is dangerous. Everything is dangerous. And on top of that, you have a demon wandering around. Um, but the thing the 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 thing that I do like about this particular book it it does have. A relatively happy ending um it, but it takes a while to get there and and not just because it's yeah. a huge book <laughs> not just because it's a huge book um but it there is hope and and that's the thing that like there's hope throughout the book and that's kind of what the demon character is trying to kill like that's kind mm. of his purpose. I think I think maybe that's why I was I wasn't ever scared of Flag in the stand because he didn't seem to have a purpose. Like what was his yeah. what was his motivation? What was he wanting to do? In this book, you know what the demon wants to do. He wants to kill Hope. So mm. he goes around and just the 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 worst thing the worst the talk about things that like stay with you. He goes around after the the nukes fall and the survivors are trying to get back on their, you know, they're trying to to find any kind of, of help in each other or, or community just to support each other, just pockets around the United States. Um, he will go into these communities and kill their hope, like literally. He, he, he went to this one community and convinced them that cannibalism was a cure for radiation sickness. Oh. Like stuff like that he does. Mm. And so like that, I find him a scary character. Um, awesome. But even though you've got that going on and in, in stories like these for me, like you don't need, you don't need Randall Flagg. You don't need this demon character putting these these humans up against this adver you know the the adversary of just living is enough it's enough um especially in this one oh my god read this book guys it is so good um have you seen it comes at night anybody yeah i don't think so i have because like yeah. that's that's a type of horror movie that is a lot more subtle because I'm, it, it's a, it's a, uh, you don't even know what happened, but there's an illness that people are afraid of getting. And um, it's more about what's scary is what people do to each other in extreme situations. And mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And that's why I feel like it's in this book in particular, the demon character is superfluous because there's a human mm -hmm. character 
who is so much more awful than this mm. demon. And and the awfulness is not just who he is, but what he does to other people. And the thing, he gets introduced at the beginning of the book. So you, like, follow his journey along with everybody else's to see what becomes of him and what becomes of the people that go with him. And it's just like, yeah, why... He was the villain. He was the terrifying character. You didn't need this good versus evil. Like, he was the evil. But it's still, regardless, very, very good book. Sounds good to me. On that note, that wraps us <laughs> up for this episode of Zombie Banana Spiders. We didn't really do this in the previous episode, but both Hillary and Colin are artists, and you can find them in and their their artwork on various places on the webs. So, Colin, where can people find you? Uh, everybody can find me at Colin Richards Art. Uh, that's on Facebook, on Instagram, or that's my website, uh, www.colinrichardsart.com. I also run a YouTube channel where you can watch me drawing monsters and talking about whatever, uh, and that is Markers and Monsters. Search for that on the YouTubes or go to youtube.com slash Markers and Monsters, and there you shall find me. And Hillary, where can people find you? <laughs> Well, I'm still in progress with uh, my YouTube channel and such, but you can find me on Instagram at Herelius underscore art. Fantastic. And I will hopefully remember to put links and all of those things down in the description so you can check them out. They're awesome stuff. And yeah. So any, any closing words, anyone? Uh Thank you guys again. I had a great, this was a great conversation and I really enjoyed uh, just talking. I always enjoy talking to you guys. So do yeah. it again sometime. I think we should. Absolutely. I think we should. Yep. Alrighty. Well, as we've been saying, you know, any comments that you want to share with us you know, or questions down in the comment section, we'd love to hear from you. Any ideas for topics you want us to talk about? Any recommendations that you have for us? would be fantastic so please do share those with us and we will see you next time yeah so bye bye